this uh, little video I'm going to show you how to make this rather splendid and psychedelic LED display board. It's quite a simple design based around cheap strips of WS2812 LEDs and a picture frame bought from a pound shop with a few extra bits. For this you're going to want a cheap picture frame. This is an A4 certificate frame that I picked up for a pound in the pound world. I've replaced the glass in this with a sheet of three millimeter thick frosted perspex. It's still got the back sheet on at the moment. Um, the frosted should give a, a much nicer visual effect than just plain glass. You'll also want a shed load of LEDs and your controller board of choice. And that's pretty much it. You may also want some black spray paint to really give it a, a final touch. Now the first job is to cover the back of the picture frame with the LEDs. You don't want to go right to the edge because you need to have a bit of room for the wires. So I'm reckoning possibly that many LEDs might be best. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. That's a good number. I like sixteen. And probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sixteen by eleven. That sounds like a good size. So if I do eleven strips of sixteen LEDs, beauty with these LEDs is they are self-adhesive, so it's just a case of cut it off, peel it, stick it. So I want eleven lengths of sixteen for this one. One moment. And there we go. There's 11 lengths of 16 LEDs. Now, sticking these on, you want to get the alignment as straight and regular as possible. So I'm going to start out by working out just where I want each row to be. Pencil. So if I line up one strip along the edge at about the position that I want a row to be and mark the first and last, actually no, I'm going to mark all the LED positions approximately. near enough. Okay, now a little trick. I actually have a specific tool in the shed for doing this with, but I can't be bothered to go down and get it because I'm lazy, as you probably well know. So I'm going to look if I can find amongst the detritus on my desk for my calipers, my digital calipers which are pretty sharp on the edges. So I'm now going to measure this distance here. I don't care what the distance is. I just want that distance. Lock the calipers off. And use them to scribe. And now all my LEDs have gone all over the floor. Not to worry, I'll pick them up in a moment. That now is the distance of my first row of LEDs. The pitch of these LEDs is about 16 millimeters. Let's just open that up a fraction. Yeah, we'll call that 16 millimeters. That should be roughly what I've got there. Yeah, that's fairly good. Let's set this to exactly 16, there we go. And now just a quick mark from each one. You could also use compasses 
or anything basically to give a regular distance. So the distance always stays the same. I don't know how many there is that. It's more than enough. Do the same the other side. close enough and now to get sticking the critical point to remember of course is that you have to get the strips the right way round but you don't want them all the same way around you want to alternate the direction if you look closely at the strips one end has plus 5 volts D in and ground and the other has plus 5 volts D O and ground so the end with D in is where the data will go in. It will travel through the strip, out the other end, and into the next strip. If we place them in a zigzag pattern, you've got the D out, D O of this one, can go straight to the D in of this one. So you end up with a zigzag pattern for the data path going all the way down. It makes it an awful lot easier to wire and going across to here, then a wire along around the back and out this end and then across again. It just means that the programming for getting the layout correct is a little trickier, but it's no biggie. If you're using a PIC32, Display Core has a driver for this specific type of display and it has a zigzag mode, so you really don't have to worry about it. OK, I'm now going to go and stick all these on back in a moment. And there we have it. The more observant of you may notice that there's actually 12 rows, not 11. After sticking them on, I found it wasn't quite balanced and there was just enough room to fit a 12th row in, so stuff it, I thought I would. You can never have too many LEDs. I could have squashed each row up and fit, and fit maybe twice as many LEDs in, but I don't want to do that for two simple reasons. One, I would use twice as much current, which would mean a power supply twice as powerful. And two, it would stop the pixels being in a square aspect ratio. At the moment, each pixel, whichever way around you have this, is a nice square grid. If you squash them together, anything that you put on it will be equally squashed up. Uh, any text that you display will be half the height you'd expect or twice the width you'd expect. So trying to keep the pixels laid out in the perfect grid pattern really is more important than quantity of pixels. Okay, now it's time to wire the whole thing up. The main control wire will come in at this corner where there's a D in. Uh, you really want the first pixel to be top left. It doesn't have to be, it just makes more logical sense that that's coordinate zero, zero, which is where it is on an ordinary screen. Now I need to go along each of these and wire the 5 volt to the 5 volt, the data out to the data in, and the ground to the ground. And then the same at this end, the ground to the ground, data out to data in, and 5 volt to 5 volt. I want to keep these wires as short as possible and as neat as possible, so I'm probably going to use solid core 0.7 millimeter cable for it, which I can bend into just nice sizes and shapes to fit in perfectly, then lots and lots of soldering. Right, back in a few minutes. One little tip when working with small lengths of single core wire when you want to strip the ends nice and delicately like this is to get something like a pair of forceps or tweezers to hold it then gently strip off one end of the wire it doesn't matter if the whole wire comes out that's quite common you can put the wire back in it's single core so it's easy to thread but don't put it all the way in, 
because then you just want to cut off the other end. Then you can thread the hole out without stabbing yourself. Whole thing back through and out the other end and it's stripped both ends. You don't have to have tweezers to hold it with but it is easier. Don't be tempted to use mechanical wire strippers for this because it will just pull the whole sheath off. certainly a pair of forceps is a good investment. You can get them from most fishing tackle shops. These ones I think actually are medical grade ones. I've had these years. They're starting to wear thin on the handles which is nice because they're comfortable. Oops, keep the still camera. I've also got these ones that I got from the local tackle shop and they're okay but they are very angular and sharp around here so after using them for a while they do hurt your your fingers quite a lot push that through there we go another one stripped i need lots of these i'm getting blood everywhere now after stabbing myself okay i shall carry on back in a moment okay i've reached the halfway point now i've soldered all of these alternating rows together the important thing to remember when putting in these solder links is that they need to remain flat because the perspex will be going directly over this so you don't want these to be bulging up and clumping up at all to distort anything so keep these as flat as you can. Another important thing is if you have it and you should is use flux. You will need flux for this. The solder connections on this LED strip are bare copper and bare copper tarnishes and oxidizes very easily. So all these connections have a very, very th fine layer of copper oxide over them. So you need the flux to be able to cut through that to solder them. It can be done without it, but it's an awful lot easier if you first cover them in flux. My current flux is an SMF. I got this, I believe, from Farnell. Um, Electro Lube do a good one. Um, it's part of every toolkit that, for an electrician. You, you can't... Actually, no. SMF is Electrolube. What am I on about? Electrolube, the solution peoples. <laughs> okay. So, yes, you need to get yourself a flux pen, or a flush metal stift, or a penna fondente, or pluma fondente, whatever you want to call it in your language. You need one. Okay, on with the rest of the soldering. Okay, and there we have it. The soldering of all the links is done. That was a fun job, it has to be said. Okay, so now I need to connect to this corner here, data and power, and program my development board and see if it works. Back in a moment. And there we have it, it's working. I just tried an experiment setting every LED to white, just to see how much current the whole thing draws maximum. And I can't tell you how much it draws, because my power supply can't provide enough. My bench supply is a uh, 3.1 amp maximum. And set it to 3.1 amps, 5 volts, it maxes out and the voltage drops to about 3.5 volts. So I can tell you that this display, with every LED on maximum, takes more than 3 amps. So I would say to drive this, ideally you want a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply. That probably means hitting eBay for a new Meanwell 5 volt supply, a nice big meaty one. But there it is working. Okay, the next job is I need to drill a hole through here to take the wires. I've also connected, as well as 5 volts and ground up to here, I've also connected 5 volts and ground down to here. So that I'm feeding power in, in two places. Basically to double the current capacity of the, the wires. 
because the connections to the strips are quite small and I was attempting to solder good chunky power cables to it. These are actually from a hard drive adapter. What have I done with it? There it is. A SATA hard drive adapter that I've butchered, taken two of the wires off. I was going to use those, but it turned out that trying to solder these to the strips was nigh on impossible. So instead I've used two sets of finer wires and connected it to two places. Nothing, of course, to stop you from connecting to more places around the, the uh, display if you do need to provide more current through smaller wires. But this appears to be for perfectly adequate for the job. So yes, next is drill a couple of holes for those. And then after that, I have another really fun job, which is optional. I'll let you know all about that in a moment. There, that looks much neater, don't you think? Right, now the big fun job. As I say, this step is optional, but if you miss this step out, the next step will also be irrelevant to you. I have here a big blob of latex, liquid latex. Now I actually get this in the form of solder resist mask. The idea is you paint it on your PCB when you've just manufactured. You do your soldering and then you can just peel it off again afterwards. It's a quick and cheap and easy way of doing it instead of going through all the UV curing of a proper mask and that sort of thing. Ideal for prototyping. I also have a small paintbrush. And what I'm going to do now, I've been looking forward to this all day, not. What I'm going to do now is put a little blob of latex on each and every LED to just cover the lens. This is quite a gentle and delicate operation. But all will be revealed in the next step. I won't bore you with the details of doing all this it's going to take me some time so I shall be back in a bit there we go all latexed up I actually found it was easier than trying to use the brush to actually use the brush handle to drip in bits of latex because it's pretty viscous stuff and also you end up just with a a lump of rubber for a brush, otherwise. <laughs> I can go in the bin now, I think. Now, why have I done this? Well, I'm now gonna take the whole thing outside and spray it all black. I've got a nice can of black spray paint. I'm gonna spray it all the matte black. And then when it's dry, I'm gonna remove all the bits of latex. So you get a completely black with just the light. It hides all the white of the LEDs, the copper of the strips, everything, and just gives you black with points of light. I shall be back in a while. It's going to take a while for it to dry. And hopefully it will have worked. Welcome back. It's next day now. It took quite a while for the paint to dry. It's been sat in the greenhouse all night. Unfortunately, the fibrous nature of the backing board from the picture frame meant it was very absorbent to the paint. So the, the background has gone quite blotchy where it's sucked in the paint. I can also, when messing with this stuff, you really need gloves on. <laughs> the latex pulled away very easily, leaving nice clear spots though it did turn pretty much into thick black tar, hence the gloves. Because of the background being so blotchy, what I'm actually going to do now is, between each row of LEDs, I'm going to put some simple black insulation tape, just to mask off the, the blotchy nature of the background. I'll just keep, try and get it as smooth and black as possible. 
There we go, that's much better. Now that all that remains is to put it together. Get it into the frame and stick the controller board on the back somehow. I'll most likely use hot glue for that. Right, time to finish this off. And there we have the finished article. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video of how to make a WS2812B LED display. And as the sign says, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you again for watching.